Hello, this has been on my desk for ages. It's the Strikefet String Machine by Waldorf. Now, Strikefet translates to spreadable fat. Okay. Now, uh, the string machines were kind of figured out by Ken Freeman many years ago with his uh, Freeman string synthesizer. Along came Arp, Selena, Eminent, Jen, Korg did a PE-1000, a Lambda, a Delta, uh, Arturia has done a Selena V, which is a software version, which is actually quite good as well. Uh, and the list goes on. There's, there's quite a lot of different types of string machines out there. Now, this sounds pretty good, actually, for its size and its weight. Having something like this on the desk is fine, especially when you put it through external effects and things. You can really get some interesting sounds from this. Uh, it's in a little plastic box. It's got a steel top on it. There's the typical sort of USB left and right output, MIDI in and output, which is always nice to see on DINs, and a little mini headphone jack as well. And this will do strings and it will also do a solo. The strings is 128 polyphony. The solo is eight note polyphony. And you can kind of blend one to the other. So I'm going to open this up and actually have a look inside this because I'm interested in how this little gadget works. So on the desk, let's open it up and have a look inside it, shall we? So as I've already said, it's in a plastic sort of case. Now this is the same case as Waldorf's two pole filter and another device that they call the rocket. But uh, I haven't got those. I've only got this one. Now there's a few good demos of this online. Uh, Sonic State has got a good demo of it. Uh, Mike at padbangers.com has also got a really good demo of this. And I'm sure there's many, many more out there. But uh, let's get into it. Obviously, the first thing we've got to do is take these buttons off, I guess. So I'll get started with those. The, only the sort of plastic shafted pots there. No steel ones as yet. Right, let's get in, have a look. Right. Yep, that uh, that is a piece of steel there. And well, there's not a lot on there. I was kind of expecting a few more chips. Maybe there's some microchips underneath the board. So I should undo that as well. Actually, firstly, let's have a look at the chips on here. Now, uh, where's my little pointy stick? Okay, here we have an ARM processor and that's a STM32F303. That's uh, analog and DSP ARM Cortex M4. Uh, it's got memory in there, four times 12 bit ADC, seven comparators, four operational amplifiers, blah, blah, blah. I'm sure you can look it all up on the net. And this little chip here, that's a max uh, 232. That is basically a data protocol converter. It will convert RS-232 to logic data, TTL, in and out and things. They've been going for about 20 years, those uh, 232s have. And this one here, I look, it's a Texas Instruments 4AC 5K, 5K, TLO 64BC. That's I'm guessing is a low power JFET input operational amplifier. This is going out, if you look at the tracks, to the outputs and the headphones, etc. And this little guy down here, 2811B. Hmm. A 2811 is an LED driver, but this isn't operating the LEDs. The LEDs, uh, if you follow the tracks, are going off to the ARM processor. Not absolutely sure what that is. Aha, uh -huh. you see, I don't know everything. I do like this on the board just there. If I can get it in camera view, that says Mojo. So where's your Mojo? Well, it's there. OK, I'll take this board up and have a look, see if there's any more chips underneath. 
I'm quite surprised if that's all there is. But then these uh, ARM processors are quite powerful chips and you can do a heck of a lot with one of those things. So let's get this up. There's another one there. that back on there don't want to lose that uh, is it going to come up yeah okay right on the back <laughs> well there you go you've just got the USB the MIDI sockets and the jack sockets no chips nothing looks like a little programming port there uh, oh there you go that is the inside of the uh, strike fit string machine. Uh, it's all basically on this one ARM processor. That's doing the whole lot. There's an 8 meg uh, crystal there. That's it. Wow. Uh, I'm actually quite impressed that that's that, because this does actually sound pretty good. And I actually thought there was going to be a little bit more. Uh, components and things on there to do the job but no that's it this here is just your uh, opto coupler for your MIDI but that's it just four chips does everything wow well that's going to be a short video isn't it so how can I extend this a bit okay I'll plug it in and I'll set it through so you can hear it even though I don't really do demos and things there's uh, there's a few things I can do I'd like to hear this I've never heard it yet through a proper small stone phaser which should give it that sort of Jean-Michel Jarre type sound with uh, the phasers and things and I've got a, a couple of old small stones so I'm going to run it through there I'll take a few pictures of this of course and put them on the uh, Google page Okay, I've taken a few pictures. Uh, so now I'm going to reassemble this and just give a give it a little run for its money. I mean, these are reasonably cheap. I mean, they're not a, not an expensive thing to buy. And I have had a few string machines in my time, which are forever breaking down and having to repair them and some of the chips are just impossible to get hold of nowadays and this is close it's it's close enough it'll do by the time you send it through effects and things it doesn't sound all that bad at all actually for its price so just reassemble this it's quite easy to assemble But this has been on my desk for ages and I keep thinking about getting around to it to open it up and have a look in there and always a nice item comes out and gets in the way not that I'm saying this isn't a nice item it is a nice item I quite like this There you go. You'd never know I'd been inside it. Fortunately, these work on uh, simple USB power. So let's find a USB lead and send it through some little demos or whatever, just to try and make this video a little bit longer. So basically, I've got this set up to a MIDI controller. And uh, as it sounds on its own, it's very nice. <laughs> bad it even has a phaser and reverb and a kind of an animation type thing in there you can put 12 memories in here you have bank a b and c and one to four and if you find a nice setting you just simply hold the button until it flashes and it's saved as simple as that now uh that sounds very nice but if you go out to things like 
phases and things. It does some rather nice, beautiful sounds. Well, the sort I like anyway. It's probably not for everybody's liking, but uh, the phaser in there is very good. But, you know, if you go through one of these or even two of these in stereo, uh, you can do some quite convincing uh, Jean-Michel Jarre-ish type sounds from this little device. So uh, let's pick another instrument. ensemble on there. The ensemble is like the magic button that sort of uh, brings the whole thing to life. So with the ensemble, without. Doesn't sound like a great difference but there is, believe me. As I say, I'm not really one for demonstrating things like this. There's lots of really good videos out there already on YouTube. Uh, I'd just like to show you what's inside these things. And I was quite surprised in what was inside there. Just uh, the typical ARM processor, which seems to be appearing in lots of uh, modern instruments now. I mean, they're very, very powerful little processors. So I'm not surprised you only need a handful of components and one of those ARM processors and well sky's the limit. What's coming out next? Who knows? Anyway, uh, if you like this video please give us a thumbs up because it helps with the searches and uh, thank you very much for watching. All the best.